you can see I've got over there on the left hand side my normal force just like there was before all of my things are the same then I started to do the lateral force, okay? Now, I'm glad some people have drawn extra things on their diagram because you want to get the angles right, you get the angles wrong, and you'll get your sine and cosine mixed up, and then it's, it's impossible to get it right after that. So invest the time and make this a good diagram. Did you say that for a like, the larger than the open speed, therefore mm -hmm. the L should be that one? Huh, hold on a second. All this is, is the axis, right? This is just the axis. So if I have a value here, and then I go ahead and do my working and then this turns out to be a negative number, that just means, oh, that's down the hill, right? But if it's positive, that's the way it's going, okay? So I've got this set up so that I know what direction positive is, but I might get a negative, right? And that's fine, that just means I'm pointing this way instead of that way, okay? So I'm defining this to be positive because I think that makes sense, you know, numbers go bigger that way. So I'm going to be drawing sine theta, cos theta, etc. And I'm going to go and crunch my numbers and find out the sine of L, right? I'll find out in a minute. Now, this guy here represents the bottom of my embankment, right? So I've got theta there, which means that in this diagram, where's theta? It's just corresponding angles, right? Cool, super easy. Okay, yeah, hooray. So there we go. So, <laughs> so therefore, the horizontal part of my friction force, my lateral force, is going to be... I have it. It's going to be... Oh, goodness me. It's going to be the adjacent side here. So that's L cos theta, right? And then your vertical component over here is going to be... L sine theta, very good. Okay, fantastic. Now, I've still got gravity over there. I'm now gonna ball everything together. So vertically, it's stationary. Why is it, oh, it's not moving. Right, because I don't want it to be moving. So friction force is going to, this lateral force is gonna be what ensures I don't move back and forth, okay? So have a look at all of my up-down forces, right? These two I've got on my left, which way are they facing? Positive, up. They're, they're both going up, okay? So I'm gonna write n cos theta plus l sine theta, right? Both facing up, and then this guy is negative. Yes? Okay, so I'm going to, ooh, hello. Doesn't like me talking about these forces. Okay, I'm gonna write that. Now I'm gonna do one more thing, which will be a little bit like, why does he do that, okay? And it will be revealed. I wonder when you will work out why I do this. This line here, I'm going to multiply it through by sine theta. Okay, that's going to give me this. I'm going to multiply everything through by sine theta. Like so. Okay, I'm going to call this guy equation, oh I've already got equation one somewhere. I'm going to call this equation three. Okay, I had one and two when I was resolving these guys. Okay. Right, so that's what I get from the vertical component. Horizontally, I've got my uniform circular motion. So have a look at your horizontal forces. You got this guy facing toward the center, this guy facing away. So this is positive, this is negative. Agree? Can we like swap it? Yeah, we can. I'm gonna write them. Is that allowed? Well, okay, so I have defined, I have defined out to positive. So I can't swap midway unless I make a big hoo-ha about it. I don't see any reason to swap it. Stay with me, right? This is positive, so I've got L cos theta. This is negative. That guy over there. Yeah, and in total, all of those are creating uniform circular motion, which is minus, minus M B squared on R. Is that okay? Now, maybe you like uh, too many negatives, right? This is why sometimes textbooks will face it the other way. So I'm going to multiply everything through by negative one, like so, and then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to multiply everything by cos theta. Now, again, you don't know what I know, which tells me why I should do this. But maybe it's starting to emerge. This is equation four. What am I trying to find again? L. I'm trying to find L. Wait, okay. you need times mv squared on r by cos theta. Oops, thank you. Cos theta. Thank you. Good spot. So if I want L, then I'm going to have to get all of this other n stuff out of the way, right? And these are the only two simultaneous equations I've got to do it, right? Can you see how what I'm doing here basically is I'm solving simultaneous equations and what techniques do we have for solving simultaneous equations? Um, substitution. substitution and elimination and which one am I doing here? Elimination. 
elimination. Because look, I've made these guys the same, so they're going to cancel if I subtract. So I'm going to do, let's have a look. Equation three, take away equation four. Okay, can you see it? So these n sine theta cos theta is cancelled. I'm going to get left with this. That's going to be a double negative. Oh, look, that's super convenient. Whoa. Right? And then on the right hand side, I have all of this stuff mg sine theta take away mv squared, like so. Yeah, you with me? So now here, sine squared plus cos squared, that's really nice. On the right, I'm just going to take out a factor of m. So I've got these guys here. Okay. Right, now we're pretty much there. You see this, right? This, this is just substitution now. This is just substitution. Because mass is defined. Uh, G, we'll go with 9.8. Theta is defined. Uh, velocity is, you're going to have to convert 180 kilometers per hour into meters per second. And we know the radius is 1,000. And we already know theta. Okay? Now I'm going to save you a bit of calculator work. For, for part one, I'm just going to give you the number and I'm going to ask you to help me. Okay? For part one, at 180 kilometers per hour, actually, someone already got it? Say it again. Oh, sorry. I'm actually just going to go straight to the actual lateral force. Okay. What I've calculated is this. Once you go ahead and your calculator does all of all the, all the grunt work, this is the number that I've gotten. What's the radius again? A thousand. A thousand. Okay. So this is the number I get. Now, interpret for me what this means. Tell me what this means. Am I going too fast or too slow for this curve? Too fast. too fast, right? So therefore, my car wants to go wee and skid out, okay? So my wheels are like, not hold it together, so they apply friction force down the hill, right? Toward the center, you see it? Okay, so this is 1,753 newtons down the hill. Okay, down the hill, right? Let me just quickly finish. You can see, you can see, the reason why this number goes negative is, look, look at V. Where is V in the equation? V is being subtracted, right? Does that make sense? So a larger V means this gets more and more and more negative. Are you with me? So that's why this is negative. When you do part two, this is the number I get when you substitute in. Thank you. So interpret for me, what does this mean? What is yeah, the car's going too slow. What does what is gravity doing to the car? It's pulling, it's pulling it down the hill and tires are like, no! Up the hill, they push the car and that's why it'll stay uh, vertically stationary. Does that make sense? So I say, therefore, 613 newtons, not down the hill, up the hill. Full stop. Okay?